So we now know that these forces from gravity, while small and other planets and things really far away, are actually measurable from things here on Earth. I mean, we're still talking about micro-newtons or at very most milli-newtons, but with modern detectors, you can actually measure those incredibly small, you know, one-tenth of a mosquito-type forces quite routinely. So, so if, if we can do it and calculate it, that sensitivity and a level, is there actually anything we can kind of use it from things we may not see? So is there a way of seeing physical things on Earth? Can I figure out if there's someone next door? Just by using gravity? Indeed, you can. I mean, I was amazed. Um, I was an undergraduate. We did a geology field trip to the Isle of Arran in Scotland, and we were on this golf course. It was this beautiful flat green lawn, and we got these gravimeters, mm -hmm. which was basically a thing that measured gravity on the end of a stick. And we were taught to walk along, put it down, measure the gravity, go a meter to the side, measure the gravity again, and we did a grid over this entire golf course. So as you walk around, you would see these very subtle changes based on what's underneath and heights and... and... What we found is that there were lines of stronger gravity in different parts of the golf course. It actually formed square patterns. And okay. it turns out there was actually an Iron Age settlement under the golf course. You couldn't see anything at the surface, but because there were big stones down there, you were picking up the gravity from the big stones, which was more than the gravity of the soil in other places. So you're essentially seeing walls or boundaries of these large rocks that they put around, and because those rocks are denser and closer to the surface, it'd be different than the soil below. That's right, and so we can actually trace out where the walls of the Iron Age settlement were and where the buildings were just from the gravity without digging up this highly expensive golf course. <laughs> so, so you can really see underneath just by using gravity? Yes. There's another example um, I found on the internet. Um, these people were analysing a church, I think it's in Slovenia. And what they did is every dot here is a place where they measured the gravity. Okay. Now they had to calculate the gravity due to the walls, mm -hmm. and every time they went up a step that changed the gravity. They had to calculate right. all that, so they had to subtract all that off. But after they subtracted that all off, they found that the gravity in the central region here was less than the gravity elsewhere. So, so what are these units here, M gal? That would be milli gravities, I guess. Yeah, so, so this is like one thousandth gravity. So we're still talking about small changes, but it's noticeable variations. And what they found is that the gravity is less in the middle of the church here, and what they reckon is that actually there's a hidden crypt underneath there that was probably oh. buried sometime in the Middle Ages. Um, but it was showing up because the gravity was a little bit le weaker because instead of having rock yeah. underneath in that area, there was just an empty space. So essentially, they just keep going down. There's no mass there, no mass, no gravity. Yep. And this is often used, for example, with geophysical surveys. They will fly planes over, say, outback Australia. And if there's an iron ore deposit, iron is quite dense. So they might see the gravity go up in some region. So if you can do that from on the surface, and if you can do that from the air, can you do that from space? You can indeed. And uh, this is the uh, GRACE follow-on mission, which is a NASA German thing with a lot of ANU involvement in yeah. it as well. Um, what this is is two space probes that measure gravity by bouncing laser and microwave beams off each other as they fly through space. So they measure the distance very precisely. And the idea is, that, let's say they fly over an area with a large mass, yep. As they get closer, the gravity is going to pull the first craft forward and down a bit. And then as it flies over, it'll start pulling the first one back and the second one forward, and then pull the last one back. And what that means is that the distance between them will change depending on the gravity of what they're flying over. Which means then when you're bouncing these lasers back and forth, the laser distance will essentially show up in that because it's either quicker or slower depending on this orientation relative to this massive thing. Yes, yeah, so given they can measure the distance to incredible precision between these two, they can therefore use that to measure the change in gravity as they fly around the Earth. And you get maps like this um, showing the strength of the gravity. This is over the Americas. And you can see, for example, yeah. when you're over the Andes, the gravity it's is higher. A because, lot stronger, that's right. Because there's a lot of mountain there. So essentially, and then you get over to the coastline and it immediately drops right when you hit the continental shelf and then kind of and there's levels a big, out. And there's a big trench off the coast of uh, Chile and Peru along here, yep. um, which means there's, if it's 10 kilometers deep, that's several kilometers of water, which is less dense rather than rock, which is more dense. So the gravity gets less along there. So you get these huge extremes. And this is, you know, literally quite a, a big difference when we're talking about it, just from going over the Andes Mountains to right off the coast of, of Chile to over the ocean. Yes, and what they can do is actually measure how this changes. So here, for example, is a gravity map of the Amazon at different months of the year. And what you can see is the gravity, red is low gravity and blue is high gravity. So in November, the gravity is quite strong here, whereas in uh, March and April, it's quite weaker. 
So there are seasonal variations going on over the Amazon. What's happening here is the amount of water in the Amazon is changing. Ah. So you've got the wet season and the dry season. So we get to the dry season, there's... All the soil's dry, there's that's right. wet season, everything's wet, and all that water weighs something. Exactly. It's, and when you have a lot of it contained in... Thousands of kilometres of rainforest, <laughs> yeah, which has right. a lot of water in it. It soaks it up and therefore is physically heavier, and therefore the gravity is different as opposed to the drier seasons. So it pulls on the spacecraft as it flies over uh, a bit more because of all that water, and that's measurable by expecting the difference between these two... So, so if you can see seasonal cha changes, say, in the Amazon, can you see it in other places? Yep, so uh, here's an uh, animation of uh, Greenland. So what they're measuring is the gravity over Greenland over a number of years from 2002 to 2016. And so white was the gravity at the beginning. Okay. And what you can see is as it goes red, the gravity is going down over different parts of Greenland. And so this is instead of per year, this is over decade. almost two decades. Yes. yes. And what you can see here is that... Uh, there's less mass. There's a seasonal variation, so yep. you can see the mass goes up and down every winter and every summer. Yep. But on top of that, there's an overall decline in the gravity. Okay. So that means as we are going further, there is less mass there, which, unless the rock is disappearing, means there's less ice shelf there. Yes, so what we're looking at here is the effect of global warming. A lot of it's not something you can't see on the surface. A lot of it's water underneath sapping away at the ice. Um, so you can measure all you like on the surface, you're not going to pick it up, but the gravity doesn't lie. It tells you the total mass of all the ice here, and it's going down, especially you can see the hot spots where it's really melting. So it's kind of like your golf course, right? You're starting to see underneath what the changes are and what where there's essentially holes almost in there. In this case, the hole is ice. Yes, so that's right. Um, so we can use gravity to measure things buried underground, um, things hidden in other rooms and so on. I don't know if any spies ever use it to work out whether there's an evil master villain in the room next door. <laughs> well, well, given I'm only one thirty thousandth of a mosquito, I feel that maybe it's not useful, but maybe it is. Maybe a large supervillain. <laughs> That's right, maybe. Or a large group of them. A large group of supervillains wearing iron armour. Who That's are. right. Um, but let, in the next video, let's talk about actually going back to measuring okay. the mass of the sun and the earth using this. Because obviously if we can use this for subtle variations on Earth, surely we can use this for detailed measurements in space. That's right.